and we have to really escalate the noise we make so that we'll be heard. Welcome to Gay USA. I'm Andy Hum from London, England. And I'm Chris Cooper, filling in for Ann Northrup from New York, New York. Great to have you, Chris. How have you been? What are you up to? Um, uh, busy, 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 uh, and uh, hosting a birding show that's going to debut on uh, National Geographic Wild Channel and Disney Plus, which is very exciting. It's kind of a dream can come true for a birder like me. So, um, and that'll be coming out in uh, early 2023. So it'll be a little while. It'll be a little we bit. We will later. be looking for it. We know you've been working on it and it's just great to have you. So why don't we get to the news? Let's plunge in. Um, in the headlines, uh, we're gonna give you the LGBTQ take on two weeks worth of primaries. And a bit, one of them includes a big win in Vermont for the community. Florida Governor Rand, Ron DeSantis finds every possible way he can to attack LGBTQ people for political advantage. But the state of Michigan has banned discrimination on the basis of sexual orientation and gender identity. We will tell you how they did that. We'll update you on where the repeal of the Defense of Marriage Act uh, stands in the U.S. Senate. Um, that elderly Long Island man who violently threatened gay groups, gay individuals for decades has finally been sentenced. While Donald Trump is incorporating lots of anti-trans language in his recent rally speeches. We'll tell you about the passing of three prominent LGBTQ movement figures. And Olympic champ Tom Daly joins uh, the Commonwealth LGBTQ people in a show of LGBTQ power at their big sporting event. At the, at the Commonwealth Games, which I saw on TV here. Uh, Brittany Griner was sentenced in Russia. You couldn't have missed that story. And negotiations for her release are now accelerating. President Zelensky of the Ukraine responds to uh, the petition for marriage equality. Um, Monkeypox is now, since I went away, been declared a national emergency, a New York emergency, a San Francisco emergency. And the United States is trying to stretch out its vaccines. And Andy is going to tell me everything I need to see when I get to London. Okay. All right. Now, all of a sudden, I've lost my place. Where's the top of the news here? Well, I think maybe the top of the news is the primary results. Um, and you mentioned that we had a big win in Vermont, which is that Becca Ballant uh, won her primary for the House of Representatives. Now, Vermont only gets one representative in the House because of their very, very small population in that state. And Becca Ballant is going to be the Democratic nominee. She is openly lesbian, 54 years old. She defeated the lieutenant governor, Molly Gray. So it was uh, uh, two women going head to head. Um, and Becca Ballant defeated her, her to get the nomination. She's a former middle school teacher, um, the president of the state Senate, and a former majority leader. Very progressive values. And uh, in honor of Becca's win, uh, we skipped over something I said I would do at the top of the show, which is I land here in London and a friend invites me on a tour of uh, Piccadilly, the street, the whole area of historic view. And we're standing there in Piccadilly Circus. And what's on the screen near the statue there uh, in Piccadilly Circus? It's a Coke ad, but it's every single pride flag you ever heard of and maybe you never heard of some of these you know the intersex pride flag the uh the non-binary pride flag the uh where it goes on and on it went on and on and on and on and on it was repeated constantly who and knew so, who knew that i mean coke does some gay advertising here but uh, that was something so let's go back to the primaries uh in ohio uh jimmo Obergefell uh, did not have an opponent in, for the Democratic primary where he wants to, he's running for the for state, the state House of Representatives. Um, but he's running in a district that leans 57 percent re Republican. However, he out, has outraised his opponent five to one. And of course, Jim, of course, was the guy who got national marriage rights for us. 
And Andy, you mentioned that uh, in our respective ancestral homeland, Long Island, that there are some candidates, Republican, openly gay candidates. Tell me about that. Because I, well, I, I haven't been following I, this. Island. This was a bit of a shock to me because the guy there on the left, George Santos, is running for Congress. And the way the district has been drawn, he's expected to win. He's openly gay, totally right wing. He's going to flip the district. This was the district that uh, um, the guy, Tom Swazi uh, had on Long Island. He ran for governor and did very badly. Um, this George is a Brazilian immigrant. Um, he calls himself an American firster, a la Trump. And he's running on dissatisfaction with Biden, inflation, gas prices, which are going down, by the way, uh, as well as uh, law and order. Um, he supported the overturn of Roe v. Wade. So, you know, as we noted, the GOP is also running an another les uh, another out person, a lesbian for lieutenant governor, Alison Esposito there. Um, and the Long Island log cabin Republicans are hailing them both. OK. Now, uh, and then also we have, just as a general note, there were a lot of wins um, of Trump-backed, big lie-supporting, radical right extremists in various Republican primaries across the country. In Arizona, I think up and down the, the ticket. Well, it hold it, Arizona, that's Carrie Lake, the, the drag queen lover who now is running against drag queens. Uh-huh. Um, she won her primary um, in, in Washington, in Wisconsin. All these Trumpers, extremists, um, won their primaries. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to analyze what this means. It's like, well, will this make it easier for, to defeat them for the Democratic nominee? Or does it mean that if they win, these crazies are going to be in control of the election apparatus in key battleground states. Right. So, 15 uh, years ago, it made it easier to defeat them before Trump just sort of destroyed all discourse and things. And then when he got 74 million votes in the last election, you realize there's this hard core of people who will who stand by him, despite the fact that uh, I mean, you I mean, look at all the news that's come out in the last week about him. Yeah, but but I think, Andy, I think possibly, hopefully, there's a wave of discontent that has been crystallized by the abortion ruling, by the, by the pulling back for the first time ever of rights that people previously had. Kansas and the results there are a great example of that. Look at the big rally in Kansas. I mean, we, this was not really expected that you know Kansas was going to vote to uphold um, abortion rights. And the campaign did it. Uh, that you know it was brought by the right wing, not by us. It was brought by the right wing, and and I've seen a map that says almost all the states would do the same thing if they had the opportunity, except a handful in the South, uh, to you know to just keep sort of the way Roe v. Wade was. So uh, you know, well, well, and, but, and, but this is what I mean about how how cause it was very lopsided in Kansas. It wasn't even close. It was a blowout to preserve sixty two to thirty seven. So if we can ride that wave of discontent and focus it and channel it into the votes, and now I'm talking to you viewers because it's, it's up to us. It is, nobody else is going to do this. And it's not enough. It is no longer enough. It never has been enough to just go into the ballot box and vote yourself. That's like the, the bottom line, baseline entry level of democracy. We have to be doing what the right wing has been doing. We have to organize. We've got to knock on doors. We've got to send letters. You know, whatever your comfort level is, even if it's just giving a little bit of money in key battleground states like Arizona and Pennsylvania and Georgia. But we've got, if we can take that on and we can get that done for the midterms, we can harness that wave of anger over Roe v. Wade. And I think maybe we can hold on to the House and the Senate. I like your optimism. Are you running? I, I'm just saying this. This is what we have to do. Listen, I, I, I am. You have a lot of visibility, Chris. A lot of people I, look to you. I am looking at Philadelphia and looking. It's only an hour away from New York. There are plenty of buses. I can go over there and I can register voters. I've done it before. I'll do it again. Why not? Right. OK. Well, let's let me just go through a couple of the other things that happened in the primaries uh, in Kansas. Also, uh, the out U.S. representative Sharice David, also Native American, uh, advanced in the primary to hold her U.S. House seat. And she's, I uh, guess, in a runoff with an anti-LGBTQ opponent um, uh, in Arizona for the U.S. Senate. Now, Mark Kelly is the senator there, but he had to run again in two years. That's now. And he was in an uncontested primary. But he's going to face this guy, Blake 
masters, this punk backed by Trump, um, who was backed by the self-hating gay plutocrat Peter Thiel, who has billions of, of dollars and spends millions on these races. In Michigan, the out Attorney General Dana Nessel, uh, she won her Democratic primary, and um, the Democratic governor, uh, Gretchen Whitmer, Whitmer uh, faces a competitive race against somebody named Tudor Dixon, who we learned is a, now she's a right-wing Republican, she's a former intern on the Rosie O'Donnell show. <laughs> and she's virulently anti-LGBT. In Minnesota, out U.S. House member Angie Craig advanced in her primary to hold on to her seat. And out Erin May Quaid is on her way to be one of the first black women and one of the first out LGBTQ women elected to the Minnesota State Senate. Well, I, bloviate, I bloviated. So what do you think, Andy? What do you, what do you think our chances are of beating the extremists who got nominated? Well, you talk about discontent. I think people segment. And that's why a lot of Republicans voted to keep abortion rights. I Listen, if Trump was in the voting booth, he's going to vote to protect abortion rights. He's probably dished out so many to his mistresses. I mean, you know, who knows what was in that safe? Uh, but uh, so uh, people segment and they can be rational enough to protect abortion and even support gay rights. We I mean, don't you know, look. We're going to talk about what's happening with the Respect for Marriage Act, right? Uh, 47 Republicans in the House voted for it because that's where the winds are blowing. But they're still Republicans. And um, uh, Tammy Baldwin, who's the U.S. senator, thinks she can get the 10 votes. There she is from Wisconsin. She can get the 10 votes we need to overcome a filibuster in September. Now, there, something happened with that bill while we were away. You know, the Democrats came out with their big, they're going to pass their big bill, Right. The big anti-inflation bill sure, it is the, a fantastic uh, advance in many ways for us. Sure, right? the inflation but reduction. Susan Collins was horrified by this because she didn't expect that to happen. So she says, "Well, this is going to make it harder to pass the Respect for Marriage Act." What? I mean, he, they, you know. Appar apparently, there was some provision in the Inflation Redu Reduction Act that Republicans had managed to to block previously. But now by putting it in, in the uh, Inflation Reduction Act, they were able to get it through. And now Susan Collins is deeply concerned that it'll prevent uh, uh, well, the Republicans will feel backstabbed or whatever. Look, Republicans feel backstabbed at the slight if you do anything that's good in the world. Um, <laughs> but w while we're talking about it, the ones that she has lined up, the five who are, who are definites apparently, are Susan Collins of Maine, Rob Portman of Ohio, Lisa Murkowski of Alaska, and Tom Tillis of North Carolina. Um, in a, she's including Ron Johnson in there, which I don't know. I, Ron, Ron Johnson, Johnson said, has said that he would. Don't forget, he's up for re-election. Well, and, but he said know, he wouldn't oppose it. He didn't say he would vote for it. I, I, I'm, well, I'm, that might mean that he would allow it to the floor and vote against it. I don't know. You know yeah, I, I, don't, I don't know what that means either. But anyway, she says she has another five that she's not revealing at the moment. Well, Lindsey Graham is against it. Ugh, no don't comment. Get me, don't get me started. Um, all right. Well, meanwhile, um, let's let's hop scotch down to Florida, where all kinds of bad things are happening. Yes. And I have to give full disclosure. I have been I have refused to set foot in the state of Florida for the last nine years, ever since the verdict came down in the trial of the guy who killed Trayvon Martin the kid who was guilty sure. of walking home with a pack of Skittles in his pocket and sure. some, you know, rent-a-cop wannabe decided to gun him down and got let off scot-free. And people are, and because of that, and because of anti-LGBTQ stuff and because of anti-abortion stuff, people are canceling conferences and things in Florida. Exactly. I, I mean, so, in, I, Indiana, I, I, just, Indiana, Indiana just banned banned abortion entirely and yeah. uh, uh, some companies are saying we're not going to expand here and we may move and well, and then you hear that medical institutions and in all these states that are banning abortion saying we can't recruit doctors to work here you have made it too difficult to do their jobs forget about it you're not going to have medical care the way you want it in your state to a certain extent, the uh, the rush to ban abortions has a limiting factor in exactly that. It's going to make it very, very hard to recruit women employees, to recruit doctors, as you, as you were describing. But down in Florida, it's, you know, since I you know, washed my hands of that state, 
it just seems to get worse and worse and worse and worse. It's crazy down there. So let's and talk DeSantis, about it. DeSantis is likely the leading candidate for the nomination for the uh, Republican nomination for president. If, if Trump 20... doesn't run, if Trump Trump doesn't run, run. Or maybe uh, even if he does. Well, at CPAC, um, Trump in a straw poll trounced DeSantis handily by like 48 points or something like that. So um, uh, Trump was definitely uh, a favorite at CPAC, but that's the conservative political action committee. And they're like about as far right as you can go um, before. I was going to say before going off a cliff. But well, Trump, who has added anti-trans jokes uh, to his rally speeches to the delight of his audience and says he complained about providing puberty blockers to young children who have no idea what that is. And he says, neither do I, by the way. <laughs> this is America. Uh, uh, then uh, he talked against trans athletes and imagined having LeBron James on a women's basketball team. Well, down in Florida, DeSantis's most high profile move lately, because uh -huh. there's been a lot of them, has been a really extraordinary thing he did. Very out of the ordinary. He suspended a locally elected prosecutor, the one for, that, uh, for the county that covers Tampa, a guy named Andrew Warren, because he had said that he was not going to prosecute people for abortions and he was not going to prosecute people for uh, uh, trans, uh, uh, for, for providing trans care. Um, I want to make sure I get that right. It, it, there was a trans related aspect. Or for violating the don't say gay law or for, you know, and yes, because this week, I mean, they had a big hearing in Florida where they want to ban trans care entirely, not just for kids, but have Medicare, not cover Medicaid, not cover it for anybody. So so what DeSantis did was he took this duly elected Democratic prosecutor and suspended him and replaced him with a right wing Republican uh, prosecutor. Uh, that he picked, handpicked, because she aligned with his values. Now, you know, some people say, oh, well, prosecutors don't get to pick and choose, and that's why, you know, it's okay that DeSantis did this. The sheriffs, there was a series of sheriffs, as the Orlando, as the Orlando Sentinel pointed out, who are actively saying that they're not going to enforce laws that they think are unconstitutional. There's a bunch of them in Florida, and DeSanta hasn't said one word about removing them, replacing them, suspending them. It is because their views align with his. This is purely political. It's a naked, undisguised power grab on the part of DeSantis. Well, Chris, he's going mean, to get away well, with it. You're talking about nullification, which, you know, uh, there's jury nullification. There's, a, I mean, the South nullified the 14th Amendment for 100 years under Jim Crow, and nobody did anything about it. Right. Nobody. Uh, and of course, now we are faced with that. If they're going to keep passing these crazy thing, decisions out of the Supreme Court, we may, we're, we're going to ignore them uh, at, you know, at, at, at some point. But you know, uh, that's not all. Uh, by the way, uh, this is something that Republicans are doing now when they run. Law and order, I'm going to fire DAs. The guy, Lee Zeldin, who's the Republican nominee for governor of New York, says he's going to fire DAs. Governors have this power. You're supposed to use it when the person is totally corrupt and you have to they have to remove them. You have the power to remove them, get somebody better in there. Who, who is, who is, but this is not what they're doing. They're doing it on the basis of ideology. Well, and and exactly. And they're, uh, the Republicans are all about law and order when it is law and order that favors their causes. Otherwise, defund the FBI. That was the cry this week, wasn't it? <laughs> defund the FBI. Well, we, there is a gay angle to that whole to the big story of the week, which is the uh, FBI raid on Mar-a-Lago. Um, uh, but we'll get to that. But yes, exactly. They're 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 pro police, pro law enforcement, and suddenly because a president who took classified documents home got a raid. They don't even. They don't even stand by the, the, the cops who got killed and beat up, uh, many, many, many beat up on January 6th. Yeah. All right. So so what else is DeSantis doing? He's also well, pushing a whole bunch of right wing school board candidates, um, spending money to support them, endorsing them in, in mailers, all who are who align with his so-called parental rights agenda, which is basically don't say gay. Right.
Uh, and he's, uh, you know, he, there was this incident a couple of weeks ago, but we haven't had a chance to talk about it here, where a bar called the R House, where a video emerged of a drag queen, if it was a drag queen, the person was a drag queen, uh, who looked more like a stripper, walking a little girl around. And so he, playing on this, he saw this video. He wants to get the liquor license for the place removed because it's corrupting minors. And he basically wants to pass a law that minors cannot be anywhere around drag queens, not at libraries, not any place. I mean, when, when you're talking about drag, I mean, my God, there's so many variations of it. I mean, this has got to be unconstitutional, but, but Andy, he doesn't care. But what about parental choice? I thought Ron DeSantis was all about parental choice. Shouldn't parents be able to decide whether they want their children to see a drag queen or not? Well, I mean, you know, I mean, the, the video in this case was, you know, was, was, a little provocative, yeah. uh, but I'm not you know, defending this specific case. I'm but, talking about but, in general. But again, they, no chance to explain. He's not interested in the facts. He just wants to capitalize on this. And this has become a thing all over the country. So drag queens are getting attacked all over the country. I mean, physically attacked. Uh, and of course, we see what happens with trans women uh, being murdered. We're going to get to that. So anyway, but so, uh, right. I was just going to say, well, we're still in Florida because bad things keep happening there. Um, there's a school district now that has slapped warning labels on a whole bunch of books that are of concern and unsuitable for students, i.e. they have some sort of gay content. And this is to align with DeSantis' uh, again, parental rights so-called uh, rule that he's instituted. Hey kids, kids, if you see that label, that means it's for you. Or, and if they, and if they won't let you take it out, go on the internet and look it up and you can read it or you can you can watch the show without any permission whatsoever exactly. but the miami dade school board they flipped they re they had rejected a comprehensive health and sex ed textbook a few weeks ago and then they turned around and approved it five to four uh so a there's a ray of light in florida they, they changed their minds. Uh, 20 uh, red state attorneys general are suing the Department of Agriculture over the rule that prohibits anti-LGBTQ discrimination in the free lunch program oh, uh, in schools. So in addition to making sure that LGBTQ um, kids can't play school sports and or go to the bathroom in peace, these Republicans now want the right to deny them a midday meal. All right, look, guys, this is why I say we have to be involved. Voting is the absolute base level of entry because there's one party that has gone completely off a cliff and you've got to factor that into your voting. You've got to keep that in mind. You've got to get out there and keep them from driving to tracking us all over that cliff with them. I mean, for better or worse, I mean, I hope all the advances that Democrats made this week under Biden and, and the fact that gas prices are coming down and inflation seems to be leveling off. Those were the things that were upsetting voters the most. And then they do upset people. Um, I mean, over here in, in Britain, they're they're about to go over a cliff in terms of their energy costs and people are going to die for it. But we'll, we'll get, get more to that, more to that later. Um, let's move on. Uh, let's talk about what happened on Long, I Long Island. We told you about this guy, 74 years old, um, who has been uh, he has been threatened. There he is on there on the left. Um, what is this? I'll, I'll get to his name. Um, he has been threatening gay groups in letters. He has been stockpiling ammunition. He has been threatening to shoot up pride parades, all this stuff. He's been doing this for decades. And uh, he did this about 65 times. He was finally caught. And uh, his name is Robert Ferrig. And uh, he has been sentenced to 30 months in a federal prison. For also, that. also from our ancestral homeland of Long Island, Dandy, I'm embarrassed to say. I'm a Baldwin and boy. Uh, I'm a Uniondale boy, but uh, uh, so ne next door neighbors, um, 74 years old and a former school teacher. What was he thinking? Why? Uh, you, uh, it just makes you scratch your head. Like uh, and, and the owner of the Stonewall Inn who was targeted by this guy was not pleased that, that he only got 30 months. He thought if you watch Fox News all day, which we don't, 
You think that LGBTQ people are the boogeymen who are trying to, quote unquote, groom your children. Who was it that banned calling people groomers? Uh, one of the one of the social media. Outlets. I think a couple of them have. Couple right. Them have. So, I mean, it, it, if you're fed this stuff all day and you're and you're not feeling so good yourself, they're the problem. They're the ones I have to go after. We have to stop them. It's, it's you know, it's mad. Well, let's talk about some of the people that we lost. OK. Sure. Well, before just before we get that, I, I just want to mention that in Virginia, it seems like the Republican governor there, Glenn Youngkin, is oh. trying to follow in DeSantis's baby footsteps um, by uh, allowing school uh, the school districts to inform teachers to inform uh, parents when students come out as gay or as trans. That and up nice. in, yeah, no, up until now, there have been several districts that have actually blocked that. Um, but now Youngkin has a majority of the Virginia Board of Education that he has appointed, and it looks like he may try to change that. So He appointed one of my arch enemies from the University of Virginia to the Board of Visitors for the school. And this guy, his name is uh, uh, Bert Ellis. And so he's my age, and he's, he, he runs a thing where he's, gonna, he, he's working against wokeness in the university and all this kind of stuff. Now, and, oh, and his big issue is freedom of speech on campus, right? They tried to shut down Mike Pence, and that's terrible. When I was there, his group, which was the university union, I was the gay student union, we were co-sponsoring Frank Kameny, the famous gay activist, pioneer gay activist. He read about it and uh, found out about it. He canceled the funding from the University of U Union. We did it anyway. So he's, he was into cancel culture before it was fashionable. Yep. It's, it's, it's always the same. It's like, it, it's, it's awful until it's in their favor and then suddenly it's the right thing to do. Right, anyway, they didn't stop them. Okay, uh, so obviously the, the sad news, and this is a litany every week, uh, the number of trans women who uh, keep getting murdered, black trans women of color, in this case, uh, Dee Dee uh, uh, Reed, 28 years old, stabbed to death in Kansas City, a uh, very popular online model she was. Uh, in Detroit, black trans woman Hayden Davis, 28 years old, murdered, multiple gun gunshots on July 25th. And I'm sorry I don't have more details on these things, but this is all the information that we have. Well, and then in Houston, Marisal Castro, um, 39, who uh, was born in Honduras, but grew up in uh, North Carolina, um, was shot in the back as she exited a car um, in the North Shore neighborhood of, of Houston. And for several days, they had trouble identifying who she was, but um, they finally figured it out. So that, that's three women, uh, trans women of color who we've lost uh, in the last two weeks. And then some pioneers that we lost, author, poet, lesbian activist, Elena Dyke Woman, her name was, uh, has died at 72. She was- Wait, was that her birth name? <laughs> well, sorry? Was that her birth name? That's, I don't know. Uh, I'm, I'm joking. Of course it wasn't her birth name. You know, Randy Rainbow, that's his real name. That's hum is my real name. name. Some of us have different names. But let's talk about Elena Dyke Woman, because she was a treasure. Uh, she was a winner of the Lambda Literary Award for Lesbian Fiction. She was also a playwright and a teacher. She was based in Oakland, and she taught at San Francisco State. And then um, we also lost journalist Chuck Colbert. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. Colbert or Colbert. I'm, uh, you're right. I apologize for not knowing. Yeah, uh, um, but he died at the age of 67. Um, he was a, a very important uh, gay journalist, who wrote for Windy City Times and a bunch of other LGBTQ publications and uh, based in Cambridge, Massachusetts, and also wrote for the National Catholic Reporter and a whole bunch of mainstream uh, 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 outlets as well, Boston Globe, Boston Herald, uh, San Francisco Chronicle, Philadelphia Inquirer, and he was a former board member of the National Lesbian and Gay Journalists Association. Yeah, he was a former president of the National Lesbian and Gay Journalists Association. And when he died, uh, really, uh, so many, for, first of all, people were shocked. They hadn't known that he'd been in any way ill. And uh, he was a much beloved figure, especially among other journalists. And then uh, Reverend Jerry Stevenson, I don't have a picture of him. He was a leader in the fight against the ex-gay movement, 
He died in Fort Lauderdale. He spoke out in the 1990s. He was a Southern Baptist preacher who'd been involved in ex-gay ministry, but he became a gay activist, taught seminars on the Bible and homosexuality, and he wrote several books, including Out of the Closet and Into the Light. And then she's not dead, but uh, Anne Heche is in a coma after her accident. Uh, she uh, apparently, under the influence, uh, smashed her car into a house. The car burned. The house burned, house burned down, and she was in she's in terrible shape and uh, critical condition there in California. Well, uh, and we should make mention because she was a gay icon and died this week. Olivia Newton-John um, oh, yes. uh, uh, passed away at the age of I want to say seventy three. Seventy three. Thank you. Um, and she was, you know, something of a gay icon and, and also did like the gayest of gay videos at the time, which was her music video for Let's Get Physical, which actually ends with the hot guys who have been working out, walking out together hand in hand. So uh, it was it was extremely wow. gay back then. The, but, way the, sweat, the way the sweat is coming on down on me now here in England, where it's going to reach 95 degrees Fahrenheit this weekend. I could 95 in England. Oh. That's crazy talk. It's, it was a hundred before I came, and then I, you know, moderated. It's it's okay at night here. I mean, it's not crazy, but we'll see. I hope I hope the trains are running when I have to leave. All right. Well, well, one more thing, Andy, which is uh, we talked about the people we've lost. We should talk about someone we've gained, which is you may not know about this because I think it, it just broke. Um, a minor league pitcher uh, for the San, Fr San Francisco Giants just came out. Um, the guy's name is Solomon Bates. Um, he came out in an Instagram post, uh, and that was, I guess, yesterday. Uh, and I guess it's just making the rounds, this news. Uh, he is black, which I think is fantastic because it's, it's so hard to find black athletes, in my opinion, who are, who are willing to come out. Uh, so he joins uh, the ranks of baseball greats like Len Burke, another black out baseball player. Sure. Maybe he was inspired by him. Um, all right. A couple of other stories uh, in the States. In West Michigan, um, in Jamestown Township, voters rejected a what's called a millage renewal to support the local Patmos Library. This is their tax for their library. Uh, it gives them 84% of their $245,000 budget because they were, we should have brought this up before, this is their protest against gay books being in the library in the young adult section. And they, again, they accused uh, the library of grooming their kids. So 62 to 37%, they voted to, not to support it. The library may have to close down. I mean, we're gonna need an Andrew Carnegie or something, or maybe George Soros or somebody to start funding local libraries because in these conservative towns, and librarians are some of the best people in the world. They, you know, they're not gonna censor books uh, and they're gonna stand by what, what happened. In, in Iowa, conservatives are suing uh, because the, uh, the, the uh, school district refuses to out transgender students and actually has what they call a, a uh, gender support plan that they create for, uh, for students in grade seven and up who are either gay or trans. So there's a conservative group, the Parents Defending Education, ironically named, who is suing uh, so that the Linmore School District in, in Iowa will no longer do this. Now, you know, you may think, oh my God, Iowa, that's, that's doomed then, you know, the, 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 the support that these students get at these schools. But remember that Iowa is actually the state that uh, in their Supreme Court in, in 2009 unanimously overturned the ban on uh, same-sex marriages. Megan and a bunch of them got recalled. <laughs> yeah, but but you know it, there is that there is that vein because of because they did the right thing. There is that vein of liberalism in in Iowa. So hopefully it will prevail. Okay, so uh, as speaking of libraries in San Lorenzo, California, uh, now the Proud Boys disrupted a drag time story hour last month. So the library started every month is Pride um, activities for the next year. Uh, including this mural that was painted on the front windows. And a viewer who lives three blocks away, who said uh, that she's lived there all her life, uh, sent this picture in and said she's so happy that the library responded in this way. That's fabulous. Less more, you know, we buried the headline. We didn't tell people what happened in Michigan. That's a huge story. The High Court of Michigan. Did we, did we not talk about Michigan yet? 
the, the high court of Michigan. Yeah. Um, the high court extended the state's anti-discrimination law, which bans discrimination on the basis of sex, to say that covers sexual orientation and gender identity, folks. And uh, and so that which is has a been a trend in a lot of federal uh, federal uh, uh, courts interpreting federal law. So uh, AC, you know, ACLU brought the case. Dana Nessel, the attorney general out lesbian, brought the case, and um, uh, and it so was a five to two decision with. Um, for all four Democrats and one of the Republicans citing in favor, and the two nays were two Republican justices. And how that case got started was a trans woman who wanted her, who was doing her transition, and the hair removal place said, we're not doing you. And that was the case, and they were discriminating. Yeah. Um, in California, they're putting reproductive health care access in the Constitution through Proposition 1. It's backed by Equality California, the LGBTQ group. Um, they're holding off on ridding themselves of their anti-gay constitutional uh, marriage amendment because they want to do that. They want to keep reproductive rights separate. Let's vote on that this time. And then uh, we'll, they'll do the other one in the, the following year. And um, another major headline, which we kind of touched on, but also buried um, some minor, uh, ethically uh, insignificant group called the Log Cabin Republicans, um, has compared the Mar-a-Lago raid by the FBI to the Stonewall riot. Nothing more need be said. Moving on. That's absolutely disgusting. In West Virginia, a U.S. District Court judge ruled that the state's Medicaid program can no longer discriminate uh, uh, against uh, gender-affirming care for trans people. Since 2013, the state has denied the coverage. Lambda Legal filed that lawsuit in 2020 on behalf of two trans men. But in Texas, a church performed a Christianized version of Hamilton, completely unsanctioned, in which they added anti-gay a, a, a preacher at the end coming out and giving an anti-gay commentary and then hamilton gets saved and they inserted biblical verses and i can only just imagine if you're lin-manuel miranda and you you know spent your life bringing this work of art into creation and it's a big hit and then some schmucks out in texas can't he sue for defamation i hope he sues them into oblivion he should because they live stream this thing so now, you know, people who looked at this probably think, oh, that's what Hamilton is. <laughs> I, uh, I, I really do hope he su sues this church into oblivion. It's called, uh, uh, what is the name of the church? Who cares? Moving on. Uh, all right. Um, uh, the, uh, in Oklahoma, schools are now going to require statewide parents to attest to a child's sex assigned at birth with a biological sex affidavit. Wow. Anyway, uh, and then a little, little, little quick history note. This came out in the Washington Post this week. There's a memorial in Washington. It's right near the, uh, the fountain, right near the White House. And it's dedicated to two men who died on the Titanic. Well, it turns out that these guys, where are they? Uh, Archie, Archibald Butt, uh, who worked there on the left, who worked for President Ro Teddy Roosevelt and President Taft, uh, was lovers with this guy on the Titanic, who was a journalist. Uh, old, older man, uh, uh, Francis Millet, and they lived together in the in D.C. and they were likely lovers. And by the way, Congress authorized their memorial, so it's not safe if the Republicans get back in. And I love the braids and everything. This guy, did the the guy, the the Archibald Butt. He was in the military. That was just like his fancy outfit that he wore as some adjutant to, to Teddy Roosevelt. And you can tell he's just like gay and happy with his braids and his hat. Teddy loved him and Francis obviously loved him. And so did uh, President Taft. Our international news, we better move on. Oh, but before we do that, just one quick know. note that for those of you who are in the New York area, uh, New York City Black Pride is returning for its 25th anniversary. It includes on August 11th, um, a uh, um, town hall in the Apollo Theater in Harlem, and then uh, events kick off on August 17th. Right, there's a big thing at the Apollo. Only people who are gonna know about it, of course, are, are, are hearing about it who were watching the show live. And uh, you can- Thursday, you, night at the, Thursday night at the Apollo. And you can uh, find out more at nycblackpride.com. Okay, international news. So uh, President Zelensky had to respond to there were petitions for doing same-sex marriage, and he made a statement 
He said, he has to respond to it. It's the law. He said, all people are free and equal in their dignity and rights. A little vague, uh, but he says he'll look into it when martial law is lifted. He says the Constitution defines marriage as the free consent of a woman and a man and can't be changed in wartime. But the family code doesn't specify genders. Uh, and uh, the gay leader of this fight is a, a 20, 25 year old guy. Uh, he said tens of thousands of queer Ukrainians defending our country during its genocide made this possible. And a very prominent uh, uh, gay Ukrainian writer, Maxim Erostravi, um, commented very savvily, I think, we will celebrate when we make sure this historic commitment results in historic action. Absolutely. Don't count your chickens until they're exactly. hat. Now, I'm over here for the uh, 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 in London. They have the Commonwealth Games in Birmingham up the road. And so most of the Commonwealth nations still criminalize homosexuality. But there was a protest, first of all. There's Peter Tatchell with uh, with other r representatives from Commonwealth nations protesting. And then uh, uh, Tom Daly made a deal where he'd get some people from LGBTQ people of color from Commonwealth nations to come in with all these rainbow flags. And we have a little bit of video on that. where homosexuality is still a crime. He runs in solidarity with all LGBT plus athletes and communities. was an incredibly emotional moment. But this wasn't about me, this is about every single LGBT person around the Commonwealth, around the world, that they might have seen that tonight and been given a little bit of hope. Even if it can make the smallest difference to someone out there, it was all worth it. Because someone today might have seen that and felt a little less alone in the world. They had a one hour uh, documentary about Tom Daly and his growth and, and, and these issues uh, on the BBC on Tuesday night that I watched. Uh, he is he's a real here. He's really put himself out there. Look, he has to listen. He has to listen. And he in this documentary, he goes around to people in the Commonwealth nations, most of whom are in hoodies, hiding their faces and distorting their voices because they can get killed where they are. But he really feels for them and, and uh, you know, puts himself out there and, and, of course, put them up front when he did this thing. You're not going to see that at the Olympics. Now, that's using your visibility to good effect. Um, and speaking of people risking getting killed um, in Uganda, which I'm pretty sure is not a Commonwealth nation, but they have taken the step of suspending, uh, I mean, a group you, you've talked about on, here on Gay USA many times, um, Sexual Minorities Uganda, which has been doing so much great work in that East African country um, where homosexuality is just under a boot heel. Um, but uh, the leader, um, Frank Mogadisha says, uh, sorry, sorry, Frank Mugisha. Who has been a guest on this show. Yes. And he says that they've, they've just been shut down uh, by uh, basically the, the, well, the it, it was a little bit of a bureaucratic uh, sleight of hand that they, they said you don't have the documentation and he said well you know this is just homophobia and transphobia uh, the registrar of companies refused to register the group because of its name which yep. is sexual minorities uganda and so uh now the decision was upheld by a judge but they are appealing that Meanwhile, in Canada, Montreal Pride got canceled at the last minute, uh, the morning of, because they didn't have enough volunteers uh, who were available to help manage the, the march. Um, this was a shock to the mayor and the police department. Everybody. Um, but a whole hundreds of people marched anyway and sort of, uh, of turning it into a, a spontaneous street protest, kind of like what, what we've seen here in New York and in other cities. And that's fabulous that they, they went ahead and did it anyway. Um, and because we want to get 
to your leave you time to do your reviews, Andy. Um, I'll keep going with um, Brittany Griner. Um, pled guilty to and was sentenced to nine years in prison for like a really minuscule amount of, uh, of uh, 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 drugs in her in an inhaler she had. Right. Um, and now the talk is that they're going to do a prisoner swap with this really awful uh, Russian arms dealer convicted here and in custody here in the States named Victor Bout. Um, I think we're supposed to get somebody else out, too, for this arms dealer. Yes, it's it's the arms dealer for Brittany Griner now, and one other person. Um, she, hopefully that will happen soon. She could be sent to the uh, a penal col colony uh, at forced labor. And um, this is where they put uh, Pussy Riot when they were convicted. And, of course, the Russian dissident, uh, Alexei Navalny. And it is not a country club. No. Um all uh, right. In um, okay, the uh, here uh, big controversy. The National Health Service, right, which is you know, uh, uh, they're closing their 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 only gender identity clinic in Tavistock, um, a saying that it's not up to their standards of care. They're overwhelmed. They're not doing things properly. Distressed. Now they say we're not going to be turning away clients. We'll find other places for them to go. Um, but, and that they'll open up new centers for trans youth in 2023, but um, to serve them. The number of youth seeking services, they say, is 20 times higher than it was a decade ago. And by the way, you've got a, you've got a leadership fight here in the Conservative Party, which is going to determine the next prime minister in a couple of weeks uh, between this woman, Liz Truss, and Rishi Sunak, outdoing themselves in not being supportive of trans people. Back in Montreal, the International AIDS Conference uh, took place and uh, successfully, and uh, both the United States and Canada jointly adopted a resolution um, that across government agencies uh, fighting uh, HIV, they're going to use the undetect undetectable equals untransmittable, or U equals U um, uh, policy. But of course, the big uh, upset there was there was a big monkeypox protest, and um, there's groups like Prep for All and dozens of global activists. They stormed the stage to demand global action on monkeypox, which apparently was a bigger issue than AIDS at the conference because it is so much of the moment. And while we are now, talking about mon monkeypox, the vaccine. And by the way, Ann and Marin, Ann and Marin did a great job with uh, Anthony uh, Fortenberry of Callan Lord a couple of weeks ago on this, but there are updates. So, Chris. Well, uh, the, the, the latest thing is that um, they're looking, or the Biden administration is looking into splitting monkey pox vaccine doses to make it go further. They, uh, wait gonna, a minute. They want to take five doses out of one dose and that's to spread it out. Well, and the way they're going to do that and make that work is that rather than uh, injecting it subcutaneously, um, which makes them go deeper and they need a bigger needle and therefore more of the vaccine, they're going to do intradermal injection, which is sort of right below the skin. Um, and it that might will make a little spot on your arm for a while, but you'll be vaccinated. And the whole idea is to get as many people vaccinated as possible. Look, the, exactly. prevention, the prevention messages are getting sharper. You know, do it. Sex without touching is basically what you're what we're up against right now, unless you're absolutely sure about the safety of your partner. We can you talk about us doing it in the elections. We can stop this. We can slow this down. I know it's not going to be easy. We can't just do what we want to do. We couldn't do what we want to do during COVID. I didn't see my friends for a year, uh, no less have sex. So uh, this is this is the only way we're going to stop it. And I think we can be, you know, look, this is starting to, of course, stigmatize gay people and people are worried about that. But and people are going to be nervous being, about being around sexually active uh, gay men if they're not taking care of themselves and each other. And that's what we need to do. Well, speaking of the stigma against gay people because of monkeypox, a couple in Washington, D.C. was attacked on that basis by teenagers who were who reportedly called them monkeypox F words. Um, and and I'm, not, I'm not making light of it, but peop oh, look, people are idiots. Yeah. People are also attacking and killing monkeys as if monkeys are. I mean, people, you know, I mean, it's a very irrational world. 
No. And it's and not going to stop monkeypox. And the last so more, than 89, more than 9,000 people infected the United States right now. Well, and a bunch of them are in Florida now because monkeypox cases in Florida, to go back down to that troubled state, have doubled in one week. Now, of course, they have a surgeon general there, Joseph Ladapo, who is notoriously cuckoo. And, a nuts uh, No, totally, totally nuts. Nuts. And, uh, uh, you know, COVID denier, vaccine denier, blah, blah, blah. So, you know, they're, they're not taking it seriously. And, as and these, these, bigots, these bigots may be happy it's hitting gay people. But if you don't if you don't help us take care of it by getting us the vaccines and spreading prevention messages, it's going to spread uh, uh, more widely. Yep. Um, we had the first two deaths outside of Africa. We should mention that this was, you know, originally in Africa, and it causes deaths there regularly. But we had a 41-year-old man with a weakened immune system in Brazil and a guy in Spain who was a fatality, too. They have found the virus in uh, saliva, urine, feces, and semen. But the main vector is touching skin, touching uh, skin with sores. And look, they did a study in the United Kingdom, 197 men, all had lesions in their mucous membranes, 56% on their genitals, 42% in their perianal area. It's not pretty. You don't want it. 86% um, reported systemic illness, fever, myalgia, and 10% were admitted to the hospital. Everybody um, take care of yourself out there. Rain it in uh, a little bit. Uh, and, of course, the, another expert said, you know, you don't want this to get into the uh, rodent population because then it's really going to get all over the place. Um, and then, look, we could get into the whole long story about why we don't have the doses. These stories are all online. You know, we, our anti-terrorism unit was more concerned about other things for a while. And they said, oh, forget about, you know, smallpox and monkeypox, all this kind of stuff for a while. Well, now they're having to step it up. All right, all right. Andy, you ready to tell me what I should see in London? Uh, well, yeah, I, I had a couple of other AIDS things, but oh, I'll get to okay. that if we have time. No, 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 yeah. Well, I'll do my reviews. Okay. Uh, I'll do my theater reviews. I, um, uh, um, uh, I almost didn't make this trip because of the chaos here and the airports and the 100 degrees and all that kind of stuff, but I'm glad I did. Uh, there were three big hits at the National Theater. Uh, the first is Much Ado About Nothing. This is the best production of Shakespeare's Much Ado, funniest that I've ever seen, directed by Simon Godwin, who is also runs the Shakespeare Theater <clears throat> Company of, the, of DC. That's John Heffernan and Catherine, Catherine Parkinson as Benedict and Beatrice. But the joy of this production is that every single character in this play was played to the hilt and everybody was firing on all senators. He kind of so, looks like Archibald Butt but there with all those braids going on. on huh? His he kind of looks like Archibald Butt there with all those braids like going on. on his a lot of soldiers in the play. A lot of soldiers and Jack Absolute flies again. Now, this is a takeoff on uh, Sheridan's, the, Richard Sheridan's The Rivals from 1775. And they said it in World War II. That's uh, Jack, whose his name is Laurie Davidson, and um, the woman he's after, Natalie Simpson, Lydia uh, uh, and uh, it's a farce. These are the people who created, did you see One Man, Two Governors with James Corden? He won the Tony on Broadway. Same kind of people. This is nonstop gags. And so at this Air Force base, uh, you have uh, Mrs. Malaprop there on the left. And uh, what I thought was the funniest character in the play, which was Jack's father, Sir Anthony Absolute. Um, and uh, he, he, his name is Peter Forbes. I hadn't seen him before. Totally reactionary and absolutely hilarious. <laughs> and then there's a, there's a play in their smaller theater called All of Us. And it's about people who are differently abled. And that, of course, is all of us. We are all differently abled. And the woman on the left there, her name is Francesca Martinez. Um, I hadn't heard of her. She's a comedian with cerebral palsy. She calls herself a wobbly person. And she wrote this riveting, almost three hour drama. And it's very personal and it's all about human interactions. The woman on the uh, right there, her name is Francesca also, Francesca Mills. But it, it she, you know, the, uh, the uh, Francesca Martinez plays a therapist. She's trying to cope with cuts in government benefits. Uh, and th this is what puts everybody's lives at risk, austerity. And it, it, the woman in the wheelchair is uh, is a very sassy, sexy, and uh, uh, fighting to survive person. Uh, it reminded me a lot of Larry Kramer's The Normal Heart, because it's a political drama, 
but it's also a very personal one. So I highly recommend that. All right. We got any more time left? Yeah. Um, Patriots at the Almeida Theater is about how Putin came to power. This guy put him in power. You might recognize him as Tom Hollander. He plays uh, Boris Berezovsky, who actually put Putin in power after Yeltsin, and then Putin turned on him. And the guy playing Putin, Will Keane, is absolutely bone chilling. Put, put his picture up there. It was like being in the room with Putin. And with all that's going on in the Ukraine, uh, it was this is an historical drama from Peter Morgan, again, that I highly recommend at the Almeida. And then at the Bridge Theater, this is Nick Heitner's theater, and he directed this, uh, The Southbury Child uh, by Stephen Beresford. Uh, this started out like a sitcom, and the setup doesn't sound funny. This is a priest, and a couple, young couple comes to him, and they want to have a funeral for their child who died, and they want to put up Disney balloons throughout the church, and he won't have it. Now, that sounds like a very minor thing, but it endangers his job. Uh, so it gets very serious in the second act, and... Uh, Alex Jennings there is just a wonderful actor. You know him from The Crown, where he played uh, um, the Duke of Windsor. You know him from uh, The Queen, where he played Prince Charles. Uh, and he played Alan Bennett in a bunch of plays. And then finally, I saw uh, Mark Farrelly in a play about Derek Jarman, who's also been on the Gay Cable Network years ago. Derek was an artist, filmmaker, died of AIDS back in 1994. And this guy brings him to a great life in the King's Head Pub Theater. Um, uh, Derek made films about Caravaggio, Edward II, St. Sebastian. Um, he, was, uh, he was an uncompromising artist. And one of the things that, one of the quotes from in the play is, uh, he says, I'll be brief, not because my time is limited, but because yours is. You are living ever less brave lives. We got to be brave, right, Chris? Absolutely. If there is a time for bravery, it is now. This is the juncture, people. We got to step up and we got to do it. And finally, I went to the Queer Britain Museum and I saw the door that there that uh, incarcerated Oscar Wilde in Reading Jail in 1895. He was there for hard labor two years. And that was quite potent, a quite potent thing. It's a small museum uh, and I do highly recommend going by and checking it out there in Granary Square. And any other entertainment news? I saw Nope, and uh, the, one of the two main characters is a lesbian. So that was sort of fabulous, and it's completely not a lot. We do want to bring attention to the fact that Angelica Ross is the first out trans actress to play a lead in a Broadway show. She's been cast as Roxy in Chicago for eight weeks starting September 12th. Um, she's a pose star. Uh, she starred in Ryan Murphy's American Horror Show. Uh, there was already a trans uh, 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 person, L. Morgan Lee, who was nominated for a Tony for a supporting role on The Strange Loop. And then has anybody seen They, Them on Peacock, an LGBTQ take on uh, Friday the 13th movies? Nope, but I think we're out of time, Andy. Well, it's been great being with you, uh, I must say, Chris Cooper. And That's I, fine, it'll, be, it'll be great to get back to, uh, to America. And you have a good time in London, too. And I'll send you my full reviews, which will be in the Gay City News, which will have things that are coming up in London as well. And Andy will, uh, and, and will be back next week. Andy. We hope so. We hope so. We never know in this world. Uh, you can't take anything for granted. We actually do have 30 seconds here. Uh, oh, so. Oh. Well, how, do, how will we fill them, Andy? Get your, know, COVID get your COVID booster shots. Don't forget that. And while you're getting it, tell everyone waiting in line for the booster shots that they, too, need to get out there and vote and get people engaged for the midterm election. And so if you want to, you to do the fifth person was cured of AIDS. Bye.